Hey guys, before we get into the episode here this week, I want to let you know about something we just launched over at SoyotronMedia.com. It's our very first Kickstarter. It's Steel City Startups. It's a magazine show we want to do. Go find out about it at SteelCitySTartups.com. Back it, tell your friends, and uh, stay tuned here at SoyotronMedia.com. Hey guys, welcome to Let's Play 5. Uh, I'm Chachi Says, your host with the most as usual don't look at me like that board operator man guy behind the camera that we can't see Sorg's giving me the finger in case you're joining us for the first time here's how the show works we have a few, few different questions it's a short show uh, five minutes for three questions each and then we go into our boss fight which gets all of the time remaining the recurring question on the show it will be what are you playing slash did you play the challenge? Joining us this week, we have Riz and Fuzzy, who are also over at insertcointobegin.com. They are my wow. team of awesome. We are we are pretty awesome. You guys are amazing, and I couldn't do it without you. We all yes. need rings that have, like, ICTB or, like, a game token or an A for the team of awesome now. We do. Yeah. That would be amazing. Actually, random thought. I did uh, I did see on Etsy a place that sells uh, men's wedding bands that have a laser-etched assassin logo on them. Well, funny you should say that, and we'll cover this really quick before we get into the first question. But if any of our listeners want to give me $120 or the uh, limited bundle for Assassin's, 3, Assassin's Creed 3, that would be amazing. Because here's what it comes with. You get the game. You get a statue of Connor. You get the Assassin's uh, logo belt buckle. And you get a colonial United States flag with the Assassin symbol in the stars. America. 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 All right, America. Riz. What? What did you play this week, and did you play the challenge? I did play the challenge. I've actually been playing the challenge even before the challenge was up. <laughs> Hipster is. And um, I gotta say, it's one crazy game. I And the pogo stick guy is probably the useless of the, all of them. But yeah, other than that, I've been playing SimCity Social, which mm -hmm. is getting like really repetitive. And Oh, I'm sorry. Riz, what was the challenge this week? Oh, the challenge, sorry, the challenge was uh, Happy Wheels. Happy Wheels. And that, that was basically a collection of games where, collection of like mini games where you can just ride down whatever and try to survive. And yeah, I, most of the time I died, but it's still, it's still an okay game. But yeah, the pogo stick guy is useless. <laughs> <laughs> Fuzzy. Uh, yeah, I I played that. Uh, I played Happy Wheels. It's weird, just odd. Although I do enjoy driving the John Deere tractor over the body parts and shredding <laughs> them up. That's that's fun. Um, but yeah, that's a weird game. Um, but other than that, I've been playing the Tropico Four demo, and I'm still playing Forza, and. Yeah, Tropico 4, I have vacation coming up, so it's just putting me in the mood for vacation, which is absolutely fantastic. And, you know, it's essentially Sim Cuba, and you, <laughs> like, every stereotype, just jokingly or, like, cruise-related or just whatever, like, they're all tied into this game. It's absolutely fantastic. You can build a statue in front of your palace of you, and then people are less likely to revolt in front of your palace. They'll go elsewhere to revolt against you. Oh, because you can of a statue? set farms that sell tobacco and sugar and what's their other export? Coke? Uh, I okay. forget the other one, but you, you make your cigar factories. You make your rum distilleries. <laughs> like, all and of the stereotypes, they're all in there. It's and you can set your the avatar as Che Guevara or Fidel Castro or any other number of, I'm guessing... <laughs> Just notorious <laughs> dictator leaders from history. Um, before before we move on to what I'm playing, uh, 
<laughs> I gotta ask, what's the limitations in the demo? Because it doesn't sound like there are many. Well, it actually sucks. What they do is, <laughs> um, you're essentially playing the full game, uh -huh. but they just haven't included some of the content. Oh, so okay. you don't have oil refineries. But it'll still give you the mission and take up one of your five task slots saying, oh, you need to uh, export 500 barrels of oil now. Uh, gotcha. But you have no way to put it in there. Uh, luxury um, tour type things, scenery, like you can put in lighthouses, cruise ships, um, beaches, roller coasters, all that kind of stuff. That's not included in the demo. And there's also some other stuff. Like you're only able to put the um, – you can only put an army base in. You can't put like the special training regiment in there. Like they, there's just different limits like that. Like gotcha. you just don't get half the stuff. And also you can't save, oh, which okay. sucks because it's real easy to just dump an hour and a half into this demo. <laughs> Not that I've done that twice, but I have. All right. Um well, I don't know if I'll be checking that one out or not. Um, so this week I played Lego Batman 2 again, uh, Modern Warfare 3, DJ Hero, and uh, thanks to the way my reader is set up, I learned about this game called Dungeon Village for my phone, and you can get it for your phone as well if you're on Android or iPhone. And basically what it is is you run the town that happens in a like a Final Fantasy RPG type game. Like those towns that are randomly scattered throughout the world that you stop in to restock up on your items or upgrade your weapons or anything. You run that town. And you try to get the uh, adventurers to come back to you and move into your town and basically make your town the base of operations. So it's like a Sim City for Final Fantasy geeks. Yes, pretty much. Um, if you ever played uh, Game Story Developer... Uh, which is a, a game based on uh, companies that make video games or uh, gaming consoles. It's made by the same company that makes that. Uh, and I I played the, the game challenge this week. Um, I, it probably sucked about two hours out of my life <laughs> that I will never, ever, ever get back. And I, I have to say that I uh, played on the, uh, the Segway. And mainly the Pokemon level, just getting shocked by the uh, Thunderbolt um, in the very first section of the level. So, um, all right. On to the other questions. And we'll start with, uh, we'll start with Fuzzy uh, this time. Uh, what company has risen or fallen uh, the most drastically? Go ahead. Uh, well, I... I actually put one for Risen and Fallen. That's fine. Uh, Fallen most drastically, I'm going to say, is Nintendo. Just because I, they just seem just to keep just flopping. Like, there wasn't anything, like, really that impressive to come from them from E3. But whenever I got into video games, they were the industry leader. They were the ones who were breaking new barriers, doing all these new crazy things. Just, I, I just... Yeah, I just see them as just being fallen. Okay. And, yeah, I just don't know, like, what the future is going to hold for them. Uh, as for Risen, I'm going to say Ubisoft, just because they can put this guy on anything, <laughs> and they make a million dollars, $10 million. You know, they, they could have, you know, put him here, put Leonardo da Vinci on the other side, yeah. have Assassin's Creed Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Oh, man, that would be amazing! Uh, you see? I would buy that! Boom! $10 million for them, right there. <laughs> man, <laughs> Ubisoft, you owe him a percentage. Just saying. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and I know they listen. Bastards. But, but yeah, Ubisoft can just put Assassin's Creed onto anything. It's gonna sell. It's, it's just so successful and just so good. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to that because I have something to add to that. Uh, Riz. Yeah, my I did the same thing as Fuzz because I'm um, like that. Right, uh, yeah, that's fine. I'm going to start with what I with the, the company that r rose much. And it's a company that I've been giving a lot of crap to for the past uh, few months. And it's BioWare. BioWare, even though they did listen to the fans – and changed their ending, which I still feel kind of 
softens the blow, softens like you know their company. But the the endings, they did listen to the fans and they did improve on what what their product was. They did improve the game. They didn't improve the storyline going through. So you don't have to sit there and going, what the hell just happened? Um, but for down again, another, another company that I've been mentioning over and over and over and over again, uh, THQ, they've, they've, I, I don't know what they're doing. They had, so they had, uh, saints row. They do the WWE games, but they seem to be just, falling off the map they they fired everybody in san diego their new head guy wants to change games after three successful for thq sake games uh and it just seems like they don't know what the hell they're doing so yeah those are my those are my rise and falls okay so all right so i am i am pinching off of both of you um, I didn't put it in the notes, um, but the reason I have to go with Ubisoft, uh, I have to agree with uh, Fuzzy on this one, and it's not so much because of Assassin's Creed, um, although that is a huge part of it, but I go into, like Riz, mm-hmm. go into your arcade games and take a look at the releasing company on a lot of your arcade games. Oh yeah, I know. I know exactly. Like, let's see here. So, I mean, I'm pretty on, sure Ubisoft honestly. like rules the land. Exactly. I'm, I'm right because I, I turned mine on in my uh, my my plight of many games <laughs> this past week, and uh, I I was switching between uh, shoot many robots. Yep. Which is an Ubisoft backed Ubisoft. product, and Trials Evolution, which is. An Ubisoft back product, and I didn't even realize that. And I also have the Hitman game, which is great. Ubisoft. So I mean, yeah, they they are on the rise as far as just overall <coughs> gaming goes. And uh, on the fall, um, while I would love to agree with Frank and say Nintendo, I'm going to have to agree with Riz and say THQ. Score because. Uh, when your company is to the point where you're at the end of your 30-day uh, time limit before you get removed from NASDAQ and you restructure your entire stock, your, your entire stock uh, way of life from uh, having 700 million to 7 million, then, yeah, you have fallen. And I'm not sure there's any way you're going to get back from that. And that was the timer, so... Sweet, Moving right on. on time. Alright, uh, best or uh, best and worst new feature in video games. Um, I'm going to start this off. Uh, for the best, and I, if you know me, then you know that uh, I was against Connect slash moving in video games completely. Um... I, but honestly, I have to say that that is one of the best new features coming out in video games. Uh, I have to disagree with Riz um, and say that it's a, a feature that I look forward to, and you'll, he'll go on more about that here in a second. Um, and I'm going to have to say the worst new feature in video games, and it's not even a new feature. I mean, they did it on other ones, but uh, I picked up Lego Batman 2 when it came out, uh, as you read about, and... I put it in, and the third option down is coming soon. And I always, I, for some reason, I accidentally click it a lot. And they only give you one opportunity to exit that trailer. So for two minutes, you're sitting there. If you don't hit Y at the right point, you're watching the same stuff you've watched over and over again. And there's absolutely no re- way for them to move that after you've watched it. And I'm sorry, I don't like Lord of the Rings. I'm not going to watch a Lord of the Rings Lego game trailer with talking over and over again just because I like Lord of the Rings. So, uh, go ahead, Riz. Uh, well, you kind of said about the game, uh, Connect Gaming. Um, it was, I, I kind of think it is the best 
and the worst of of the two because it's it's the best because you have games that control that you can control like a dance games or fitness or or Star Wars Connect where you can actually be a or be close to a Jedi. But there are also games on there like uh, Mass Effect Three, uh, Skyrim's going to do this that have the ability to be connect games. I just feel like if I have the option of choosing between moving around and doing stuff or just pressing a button, I'm going to press a button because I'm that lazy. <laughs> so, you know, it's just that sort of angle I see at gaming. Like, I'm still going to probably buy a Kinect some somewhere down the line. And I'm still probably going to use it for Connect games. I'm not going to use it for Mass Effect. I'm not going to use it for Skyrim. I'm not going to use it for anything else that considers to be a control-based game. I'm just going to use it for, for, you know, Star Wars or something like that. All right. Frank? Um, Yeah, I apologize. I just now saw that this was a question for tonight. (laughs) So uh, I am going to have to agree with Chachi, though, for, um, for Connect for being the best feature because what they're going to be doing with smart glass is just absolutely tremendous. And also just some of the other things like, uh, Forza has a special mode where in Forza four, uh, you can set up your connect sensor just to read your head, just which way you're looking inside the car and then just read your hands like you're steering. And they put you behind the wheel of Ferrari 458. Have you racing down a mountain road against a bunch of Toyota Yaris's? And it's just the challenge to see how many you can pass. And the way you steer the car is with your hands. And the perspective of the driver uh, actually changes whenever you move your head. So if you want to check one of your mirrors, you turn to the side. You want to check the other mirror, you go to the other side. So I think that that is um, the best new feature. The fact that they're, they're finding even just little ways, even though it's just a side thing and they aren't, um, well, it's nice that they aren't jamming it down your throat like, oh, you have to have Connect if you want to play this and get the full experience. It's just, oh, here's an extra added thing. I think that that's just a very well done uh, just add-on to a game, and I think that that's why uh, Connect is uh, the best feature, uh, best new feature. Um, worst new feature? Um, I... I'm actually not quite sure. And again, I apologize because I didn't see this question earlier, so I don't have an answer for you. That's fine. It happens. All right. And it is time for the uh, the boss fight. The final question. The biggest question. And this week, uh, this is all stemmed. I would like to uh, uh, a little back backlog on this question. Um Recently, the president of EA, uh, Frank Gibbero, I think his name is, uh, had a press conference or met at a gaming uh, press press conference. And in the same exact uh, statement, he said that EA was going to go 100% digital uh, really soon. And then a good six sentences later he said but gamers can still buy in retail settings if they prefer it that way too so uh, i i posted about it on the site and i explained to uh the the president of ea that you cannot both be 100 percent digital and release stuff in retail settings um I'm, i'm pretty sure the guy doesn't understand how math works um which leads us to the boss fight question for this week do you think gaming companies should go 100 percent digital riz yeah like ea i can see doing that because they have money and they know how to spend that money and but I, with some other companies like uh some smaller companies they need to have physical copies they need to do something that's worth their while so they need to get that and they need to do that but uh, like I was going to say before, there are examples of games that are released through Xbox Live and Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation Network that succeeded. 
succeeded. Like uh, Alan Wake's American Nightmare is a phenomenal online or an online game, a phenomenal arcade game on the on an Xbox Live system with Xbox Live graphics. Uh, Gotham City Imposters is also one of those games that overall is just one a shoot 'em up game, but it still holds like playability factor it still holds that you can buy this game and play it like no nobody else i'm gonna stop um, you there uh i disagree with you already oh uh your your examples no don't oh this is what the boss fight is supposed I know, to be I know. Go ahead, go uh, ahead. but uh i i have to uh discredit your examples right off the bat because you're naming games that don't get the budget or the market that uh games like Madden or Call of Duty Reach. Okay. So, do you think that Call of Duty or Madden type games would be okay 100% digital? No. No, I I know exactly what you meant. No, they cannot. Because you need... uh, It gets confusing to say, but for games like Ma- uh, Madden and uh, Call of Duty, there's more to that than just playing one aspect of the game. Right. Like there is for, you know, Gotham City Posters, which is a just shoot 'em up game. There are more aspects to Call of Duty or Madden than just doing that. Um, also, the online features I've mentioned before in online games... Like on an Xbox Live, they suck. Okay. Most of them do suck. Uh, but, yeah, go ahead. Uh, my whole point, um, I, and I'm going to keep mine really simple now that I've already uh, rebuttaled Riz. Uh, I say no, and that's because the amount of hard drive space these consoles would have to include or have to allow to have games like Madden, Call of Duty, Assassin's Creed, uh, and, and so on and so forth, uh, in order for them to be completely digital, is going to be huge. Yeah, that's it's, that's exactly what I'm thinking. It, you cannot... I mean, you're going to have to have hard drives that are going to be uh, uh, terabytes. Mm-hmm. And you're you're going to have consoles that are, that are terabytes. So, and while, hold on, wait, wait, what's the silent one have to say? Uh-oh. Oh, oh, Sorg, Sorg is saying, Sorg, Sorg is rebuttaling us all. Uh-oh. He's saying storage is getting cheaper, bandwidth is getting faster, it's coming. I still disagree with you, because it, you're going to take, you're taking, uh, you're taking away people's options. Like right now, we have tiers on what level, and this is just my example of it, we have tiers on what level Xbox we want to buy. If if you're going all digital, no, I'm sorry. That takes away the option because you can't afford to give people that option anymore. Also, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I'm taking too much time. Fuzz, go for it. Okay. Um, the, w- the big concern for me is just thinking about how easy it was uh, that the PlayStation Network got taken down, that they accessed all that information. What happens whenever someone uh, hacks into Microsoft's database of who bought which games and then says, oh, you bought all of these shooting games? Nah, no, you didn't. We'll just get you a whole bunch of uh, you know early 2000s NBA games. My little pony... <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? Oh, well, I, honestly, if they put Robot Unicorn Attack Evolution in there, I wouldn't mind that. But that's besides exactly. the point. Um, but no, like because hackers would be able to go in there and then just troll people and just change around their game purchases, and they they're just like, I I don't know. Like, it just seems that there's too many issues with that. And then also you have people. I know it's common with Android that. Uh, if there's a good paid app that you just find someone who has successfully pulled the APK file 
then you just run it on your phone. It automatically installs. And there you go. You have a paid app for free, just pirating, just like anything else. And that would become just so much more common unless they put in some sort of big complex uh, verification system. But that would also just be another added expense that would, uh, in turn, just add to the cost of doing this all digital thing. And the big thing, how you were saying about different games, just even thinking about needing to run Forza 4 completely digital is just mind-numbingly just awful. Because uh, of, now, how do you say that? What? Yeah, I kind of got chills just thinking about that. Uh. Well, and my whole thing is I looked at buying uh, Arkham City Asylum, the first one, uh, completely digital through the Xbox uh, market. The X, the yeah, whatever the Xbox Live market, it was ten gigabytes. That that is not a a, a viable option at this point in time, and uh, the guy I'm, I, I keep referring to as the silent one uh, behind the the switchboards is Sorg, and he's communicating through the chat room, which we're going to open up here uh, now that we have this pretty much down to a conclusion. Um, he said that when digital becomes uh, the cheaper option for an, an, the number of users and retail, they'll switch. Yeah, but that's still a ways down the road. Yeah, yeah, and, that's not anytime soon. And to say that one company has a security figured out in an ocean of video game companies is not a uh, a viable answer either. Because just just because one company was able to throw that dart at the bullseye doesn't mean the other companies are going to take the time to figure that crap out. And they're definitely not going to work together on this because that defeats the purpose of the video game market. So, um, uh, if you can, my kind sir. Yes. Uh, hold on. He, he's communicating with us through the chat room again. He's communicating through the internet. <laughs> he's saying that we're all playing gay Kai. Speaking of gay Kai, they're being bought by Sony. No, <laughs> I don't. Spe- I don't. That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> What's how do you pronounce it then? Gai Kai. Okay. Gai Kai. I apologize, Gai Kai. And on live in five years, anyhow. Um, no. Uh, if can you scroll back up? There is something I wanted to touch on in the chat room. Uh, a little bit more. A little bit more. Boom, right there. Uh, uh, Zero uh, 2K, who listens and watches a lot, uh, said that there was some news that the Diablo 3, uh, Bioware Di- Diablo, th- yeah, Diablo 3, uh, banned all Linux users from their servers so they can't play anymore. Um, that is very true. They did do that. Because technically, it's a violation of their emulation uh, terms of service. Because you have to use you have to use a program called Wine in order to run Diablo three, which is an emulate a Windows emulator inside of Linux, which is a violation of their terms of service. So that's why that happened. Um, and Ciro, he also said that uh, the worst feature is special pre order only content. Agreed. That is horrible. Mm-hmm. Um, and it all it's always so awesome, too. But it's never enough to make me want to order it. Like, uh, the Amazing Spider-Man game that's coming out, uh, if you pre-order the cut con- from certain places, you get Stan Lee as a playable character. And Have you seen the footage of that? Yeah. It's fantastic. I know. And while it'd there be was, awesome... There was one time uh, when I did do the pre-order to get... Uh, special content. Uh, whenever Transformers War for Cybertron came out, mm-hmm. they offered Shockwave as a character if you bought the uh, pre-order through GameStop. So I did. Gotcha. Yeah, no second guessing that. I want Shockwave. <laughs> yeah, and I, then a I week kinda... after it came out, all the all the pre-order specialty characters from all the different stores were all bundled into a pack that you could buy anyways. So I could have waited, you know, a month or two. Save myself twenty bucks on the game, and then gotten the character anyways. Right. I kind of have that yeah. same thing when I when I pre-ordered Hitman. You can call me uh, anytime. 
for that. Um, when I did that, it was it came with the uh, sniper rifle challenge, and I'm looking at this game. I'm thinking, when playing Hitman, am I going to use a sniper rifle? I'm, I I don't want to use a sniper rifle. <laughs> I want to stab someone in the back <laughs> with an with an axe. I want to. I want to do that. I don't. I don't want to snap people, sniper people. That it. That is very true. Um, what else is there? Uh, Bobby said, uh, "Can you go back up a little bit, please?" Uh, Bobby said that uh, Naughty Dog is risen. THQ is falling for him. Best uh, great DLC like uh, Dawn Guard West. Uh, Dawn, uh, eh, Dawn Guard. Uh, worst Call of Duty Elite or any Elite services. Um, Bobby said, no, it's too easy to lose digital content. I like to have a hard copy in front of me so I can see what I have at all times. Um, can you go down? LB had some trouble finding his, uh, physical WWE 12 that he bought a few months ago. He did. Um, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. I just want to cover the rest of the, uh, uh, it's, uh, Sierra also said the worst thing is when two different stores, uh, give out two different pre-order content. Yeah. And that is exactly my, the the thing i hate the most because i mean obviously if they're doing pre-order they're both awesome who's gonna get your money because you're not gonna go out and pre-order the game twice and if you are then you had the game before it came out anyhow i find because that's how much money you have yeah it's exactly what but i find i want to go back up to what bobby said uh i find it quite funny that naughty dog is risen for him and that THQ fell, because <laughs> if you remember, the guy from Na- the co-founder of Naughty Dog is the new president of THQ. If I'm not mistaken. So the guy is responsible for both, pretty much. All right, so, and for the uh, my my final point, and then we have to get out of here because we're we're running long. Oh yeah. Um, but uh. There are some people that just want physical media. And that's all there is to it. You can give them digital all day long. But when it comes down to it, they want their hands on a copy of the media they own. And I'm sitting with two examples in this room. Number one, Sorg has bought the same collection of movies... (laughs) <laughs> on VHS, and then when VHS was obsolete, went back out and bought the same collection of movies on DVD. And you know what? He'll do it again when Blu ray comes around. He's shaking his head no, but I, I know he will. I've Fuck Blu ray. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've done it. For, and uh, it's uh, sitting, sitting next to me on the couch is uh, a friend of ours, Mad Mike, and he is another one. <laughs> that has to have physical media. And I say this having been in his his living room and have seen the shelves upon shelves of DVDs, Blu-rays. <laughs> I, I'm sure he has VHS hidden somewhere in his house. I, I bought the entire... Like, when the Harry Potter movies came out, I bought each and every DVD of Harry Potter. Then when the Blu-rays came out, I bought the Blu-rays of Harry Potter. And now that they're coming out with the ultimate Harry Potter collection. Yeah, I pretty much bought that one too. And I'm probably going to do the same thing with the Avengers movies, even though I don't even have a 3d TV. Exactly. And I'm still going to buy them, even though part of them come in 3d Blu-rays. I like having physical things for my money's worth. Can I say one thing here on the digital versus, uh, well, one music is all digital for me now. Like if I buy anything new, it's digital. I don't bother anymore. You see how many CDs I have. It's ridiculous. No, you you cannot use music as an example. Well, I think, I think you can to a point because it's a, it's an industry that already has done it and people, that perception has changed for a lot of people. I think you can see that by what's happening in the stores. I think that will, I think that will happen eventually with movies and video games. It will eventually, uh, yeah, just not anytime just, soon. Uh, I think it's, movies are a lot closer. Well, I, I buy a lot, a lot less series because I can grab them off of Amazon, iTunes, or just watch them on Netflix. You know, whenever I want. I, I if it wasn't for Netflix, I probably would have bought the entire Doctor Who series, right. and that saved me a lot of money. Not um, having to. And, I, and 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 the video games are already transferring over for me because I'm buying more arcade games. And you should see my list on Steam. 
and I uh, buy those because I have the old copy of Doom that I can't run anymore, and the old copy of Duke Nukem 3D. How am I going to run that on a new Windows 7 right. PC? Uh, to go back to the chat room, uh, John said that uh, music is a huge example, and I still disagree. Music is not comparable to movies or video games. It's the first step. Music is the first step in the process. It's the lowest barrier step. And and while uh, while they will follow the example that music's uh, and the good and bad examples of that music set in this precedence, music takes up a lot less space and 90% of the population out there has a pocket device that will play music. We do not have pocket devices that will play my Xbox 360 copy of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Until that happens, that's what it's all going to come down to. On live. Also, a lot no, of people... On live, on live is not reliable yet. Not yet. 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 It's still a ways off. That's what I'm trying to get across. It's not that this won't happen. This is inevitable. It will happen. It'll end up like Gamer, where a guy walks into a room, lays down on the floor, and starts controlling everything with his hands. Okay? If you haven't seen the movie, go out and watch it. It's uh, decent. I don't think it's ever going to be all digital. I don't think it is, because there are, there are idiots like me who will still <laughs> want... Like like Sorg was saying with the Doctor Who collection on Netflix... I know I can watch everything Doctor Who related on Netflix, but, there yeah, will, but I, I still and bought I think all much the like movies. and then you go the argument of comic books, it turns into the niche people will want the physical thing, and the majority of people want the easy use and the digital. Okay, okay, all right, all right. It all takes one <laughs> system, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it all it's, takes. What's going to be the iTunes of video games? Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I, we can. We're going to have to. Uh, we're, we're stopping here because yeah. this could be an entire four-hour conversation about this one topic, and we still wouldn't get anywhere. I'm Chachi Says, uh, for Sword Behind the Boards, thank you to Mike for being a live audience in the studio, for Fuzz, for fri for Riz, I almost called Riz. you Frizz. <laughs> um, check us out at insertcointobegin.com, updated daily news of video games and entertainment stuff that you love. I'm Chachi Says, thank you for watching. Keep on playing, nerds. <laughs>